Hey, welcome to Hump Day, November 17th. It's Wednesday. I'm John Zadar. You're watching On Top and Hot. These are brought to you by Penny Boys. Yeah, yeah, I know, Penny Boys Alerts. Everybody talks about PB Alerts, but you need to check out Penny Boys University. That's an education worth bragging about. Learn to read that chart, and you know when you're going to be making money most of the time. So what I do here is I look at OTC and penny stocks that you should probably be looking at too. These are stocks that are grabbing attention, have headlines, catalysts, or they're under the radar, undervalued, new technology, whatever it is, I want to share these things with you. And something happened yesterday, you probably all saw it too. There was a stock that ran 1500% out of the clear blue, hasn't been doing anything, and it should have at least this week, but it didn't until some Something else happened. What am I talking about? Let me show you right now. I'm on the OTC markets. That's where I do all my research for OTC stocks because this is where the OTC and FINRA puts the information for investors to find it. Now we're looking at this company particularly because it has been hot. It's been hot in the media, lots of talk about it, especially social media, and it has been hot on the chart, at least only just recently. Electros finished the day at $5.27. Did 6.73 loss today. So why are we looking at it? Well, yesterday it did like 1,500% gains, right? We looked at it, it went from 35 cents up to 575. Well, we're gonna look a little deeper at it right now. They are pink current, verified profile, transfer agent, and they say they are a shell. They say they're not making any money. And that's probably a big reason why it's moving. Now, when we look at the stock, we get a feel for what's happening. They normally do 34,000 shares. Today, after the 1,500% run, they still did, what is that? Oh, goodness, that's 100 times as much volume as normal. 100 times, that's a lot of attention. And what is their share count? Their share count... Well, if you add the unrestricted shares, which are the ones that go in the open market, and the restricted, which are the ones we can't touch, you come up with the outstanding share count. This is for the insiders and the hedge funds and institutions. So I've got to figure that that number right there is what's left over for us and is the float. We're looking at a very nice float, 16 million. Now we shouldn't see any financials here, right? No, we didn't expect that because they are a self-proclaimed shell company. They tell us up front they're not doing anything. And they've had any disclosures? Um, yeah, they have, but they're not real relative to what's going on right now. So what else have we got here? Well, let's take a look at the news. All right. We can see from the OTC vantage point, there is no news since 2014, but they do import news from online, even if they're press releases. So I don't understand all the time why press releases aren't on the OTC, but they can be found online. In either case, there are three pieces of news that we need to focus in on, and they pretty much tell the whole story of what is going on. We have two pieces of news here that go basically side by side. They say the same thing, but they add a few key pieces of information. Let's take a quick glance at these. This first piece of news comes out on November 1st. The company secures patent pending for revolutionary battery charging technology. The company is planning to market their efforts for the patent pending technology to major manufacturers of electric vehicles. They did just file for a patent for this device on October 27th. Now, this has not been approved yet, so they got a license for patent pending. Patent pending allows them to take their product to market before it's approved, before it's given the patent, and they can get that first mover advantage. How many companies do you know right now that are selling a device that goes into your vehicle and helps your batteries stay charged so that you never have to worry about running out of power? So you never have to plug into any outlets anywhere. I don't know of any. So it's really important, this license for patent pending. And they are going after all the market. They are going after Waymo, Envoy, Lucid Motors, Revo, Neo, Nikola. The other press release, they mentioned Tesla, Nissan. I mean, everybody is a potential customer and they may be very excited for such a product. 
Now, they also say that they're not just going after electric vehicle markets, but the alternative fuel markets, which is kind of funny because when they say alternative fuel, they're referring to gasoline engines, combustible <laughs> engines, which compared to your electric vehicles would be alternative fuel, I guess. And so they're going after the electric car market, the hybrid market, and the other markets which deal with the engines and the brakes charging the batteries. And they're trying to cover it all, but they're using their technology also, as they tell us here, to begin operations to design, develop, and manufacture and sell a fully electric sport utility vehicle with their technology, and they're going to sell the device. That is what they intend on doing. And over here in this news, like I said, this one came out on November 11th, so this is 10 days later. Uh, Volkswagen was the other one I couldn't remember that they were getting into. They also want to develop into becoming a major supplier. So they don't want other people to make this stuff. They want to make it and supply everybody. They really have some big dreams here. Now consider they're not making any money yet, right? Now, this is where it kind of got interesting for, for me. I mean, this is all great talk and everything. But then it says that uh, they are targeting not only the EV market, but they plan to manufacture that EV vehicle of their own. But how do they plan on doing it? It's going to take a lot of technology and a lot of help. Well, they've done it by signing a contract with this company called Segula Technologies. And Segula is a company over in Europe and they're big folks. I'll show you some information. They tell us here that they've got a US base right here in America in Detroit. Well, they're close. It's actually in Plymouth, Michigan, but they're right. They have now expanded here into America as well. Let me show you. So this is their site. They do quite a lot of work in many different areas. As a matter of fact, Rather than try to drag you through all this, let me show you some of the stuff that they've got going on here. The company was founded in 1985 as an innovation and engineering service consultancy. You can see here that in 2007, uh, Segula took over the Brazilian engineering service company. In 2009, the company acquired the electric vehicle business. Back in 2009, prototype department of Matra Automobile. They are growing Spain, Romania, China, the United States, Germany. They are moving around the world and really fast. 2015, they acquired the Brazilian company, Promax, whatever that says. And then in 2016, they got that uh, Michigan-based company, Griswold Engineering, that they said was in Detroit. That is Plymouth. Uh, they also that same year got a Moroccan subsidiary and they got a French company called Sekama or something like that. So the company is constantly getting further and further into this and they help companies to design and build the concept items that they need. We see here in mid-November 2018, Segula and Opal announced that they had agreed on a strategic partnership. It got very serious. Uh, there was actually a big... Uh, uprise with the employees of Opal and it came down to a nice severance offer or you can work with us but they did cut 2,000 jobs nonetheless and we can see here in a nutshell Segula employs around 11,000 people in 140 offices in 28 countries the company has around 100 branches in Europe including five production sites in France for the manufacture of components for the aviation industry in Germany and Austria Segula Technologies has 550 employees in other areas of the country as well. And you can see down here what they're involved in. Now, we are looking at the automobile section, right? Automobiles and commercial vehicles. Segula develops individual components or complete vehicles from the external and internal design to electronics and the engine. The company also designs machines for vehicle fleets and carries out vehicle tests. They also work in aviation energy, the rail sector, shipping, oil and gas, pharmacy. I mean, they are a very large company and this is now going to be the backbone of how this company gets up on its feet. But somebody believes in this company more than I do. 
It was this last piece of news that made all the difference in the world. These two pieces of news are really good, especially for a company that is not making any money. They've got technology, they've got a great idea, they've got a business plan basically. It looks like they should be ready to tear it up. But you look at the chart, there's very little response or interest until this came out yesterday, which is when they got their 1500% jump. This tells us that Miami billionaire Dr. Michael Deezer becomes one of the majority shareholders in Electros. Now think about that for a second. A billionaire. We're talking about an OTC penny stock that hedge funds can't invest in, whales won't invest in, institutions normally don't look at because they're just too small and they're not doing anything right this company's doing absolutely nothing and then here comes this billionaire who has now become a majority stakeholder he's jumping in in the helm he's going to help steer this company why why would a billionaire get involved with such an idea well a lot of people thought it didn't matter that's why the price rose so fast yesterday but it does matter the reason this man got in has a lot to do with the success of the company Okay, so I am over here at DeezerDevelopment.com. This is coming from Deezer himself, so we are getting it straight from the horse's mouth. I guess this is a recent picture of the man. Now, this man made his mark in real estate. Uh, he was uh, a developer in New York City, and he converted a bunch of factory buildings into luxury offices. He took the area of Chelsea and turned it completely around. This made him pretty famous. Uh, let me see. It says here that uh, today the Deezer Properties in New York is the largest of its kind with holdings that include 20 commercial buildings in addition to completing eight commercial co-ops and one luxury residential loft condominium and encompassing more than 1.3 million square feet of space. I also heard he's responsible for developing and putting in the car elevators for the high rises so people could actually have their cars come up and go into their homes, a garage in your apartment on the high rise. Uh, it says here that in 1985, Michael began to purchase oceanfront property in South Florida and is now one of the largest oceanfront property owners in Sunny Isles Beach owning just over 27 acres of representing one of the largest holdings of beachfront property owned and developed in the state but what's really got things jumping was this down here I'm gonna read this in collaboration with real estate mogul Donald J Trump Gill led the Trump Organization's first foray into the South Florida real estate market through the successful development of Trump Grande Ocean Resort and residences and Trump Towers in Sunny Isles Beach. Despite the downturn of South Florida's residential real estate market and the ongoing recession, Gill managed two remarkable achievements between 2009 and 2010. Remember, we had the, the real estate crash in 2008. This was not a good time for real estate. He secured sufficient sales to pay off Trump's Royale $210 million construction loan and the $265 million payoff of the Trump Towers mortgage. Combined, $475 million. So the man has affiliations with Trump. From what I understand, he's even donated to his new organization. So he's still pretty tight with Trump in some way, shape, or form. And that doesn't hurt. Having money, having uh, influential friends, no matter what you think of Trump, his name does have clout. But why is he in this company? You know, real estate does nothing to do with cars. Well, right here. As Deezer Development continues to expand its portfolio, Michael has taken on a new venture, opening his Deezer Collection Museum and Pavilion. An avid car enthusiast and collector for nearly 50 years, Michael today owns over 1,000 of the most unusual vehicles held in private collections in the world, including American classics from all eras, rare European classics, Hollywood star cars, micro cars, along with classic motorcycles cycles and more. Yes, this guy even has a museum just for cars and he has bought the cars from the movie cars. He's bought cars from the Batman movie, from the Bond movies. This guy loves cars. That 
is why this man has invested in this. He could be the next Elon Musk, maybe more. I mean, Elon came out with a nice car, but what if this guy backs the device that keeps Tesla's charged forever? Won't he be remembered as well? Now the company isn't really making any money. They are a shell company. They do have $10,000 on the books right now and they had to spend about $2,100 of it last year just to keep afloat, I'm sure. So things have changed now. They've got a patented device, at least it's patent pending, and this device keeps electric cars, whatever kind of electric car it is, charged while they're going so that you never have to stop to recharge and you never run out of charge. And they're building their own SUV with the help of a very huge dynamic company that has years and years of experience. And you may want to do more DD on them if that's what it really takes because that company, as I said, is the backbone for what is going to now be happening with this company. Let's take a look at that chart and see what sort of action it has had in the past. And what can we expect for the future? So we're taking a look at all this information on TOS, that's Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform that you can get. All you gotta do is sign up with TD Ameritrade, that's free too, and you can get it. Just remember, you don't have to deposit, you don't have to trade, but you gotta keep your account open. All right, we are looking at ELEK, that is the six month, four hour, and it's very sparsely traded. How sparse? Well, you see these red lines here? Those are months. And you see that one transaction in the midst of it? Well, you know, really, what do you expect? The company's a shell company. They don't have anything going on, so the stock isn't moving. Now, I want to show you that this here is October 26th, and the next day it traded was November 4th. Where's November 1? Where's the trades for the news that came out that said, hey, we just secured a license for patent pending for this new technology for battery charging on the go? None. Absolutely none. And if you come in on the one month, it's a little easier to see. Right here is the 11th. Now, it's tough to tell, but there is some bounce there. I'll grant you, there is a little bit of bouncing going on in there. It could be 10 cents. It could be. But for the news, for what it was, it didn't do anything. You can see the volumes up a little bit in that day. Even trailed off the next day and got cool, right? Then the news comes out about the billionaire. Now, there's something that catches investors' eyes. Why? Because another investor who's already got so much money that this really shouldn't matter. Right, we're talking about a penny stock, and this guy is investing in a penny stock. Why? Well, you know, I think because the man's a billionaire, he's got his toys, he's accomplished a lot, but he needs a project. He would also maybe like to make a mark in the world, do something, and this is, well, it's genuinely new. We don't have any companies that have any products that charge cars on the go that I'm aware of. He could be first mover. He could be remembered for that. And let me tell you what, you want to be remembered when you've done everything else. So he can't help the company financially, as far as I know, being a stockholder, but he can steer this thing. He can, he can drive it. And loving cars, he has a passion. He's already invested in it in his life. He's invested in it and he spreads out that joy with these museums. He's got more than one of them and he likes to share his collection. It's not hiding in a, uh, a garage somewhere on his property where nobody ever gets to see it. So I really have faith in this man. I truly do and I have faith in this product. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm saying all intentions are good. Look, let's face it, a billionaire invests in it. He didn't just jump in it and have his name thrown around on the internet to look like a fool. I'm sure he did his research. I'm sure that he looked at it, he's done his DD. And, you know, at the same token, some people may be saying, screaming, pump and dump, pump and dump, which is getting somebody outside the company to spur the price on. And then when it gets high, you sell all your shares and it tumbles. Well, if we hear of these are selling, then that's exactly what it was. But 
I don't expect a major stockholder who has put his name out there and has a reputation like he does would do anything as foolish and hurtful as that. So, I think we're in good shape. I think you have to be no. patient, though. No. I don't believe that this company is going to continue to rise, though. Why? Because there's something wrong with it? No. Because investors have no patience. That's why. I think once the news dies down and there's no new news, things are going to become, well, boring. And traders on the OTC like to go where the action's at. They're going to pull their money out of a quiet stock, say, I'll come back in later, and move on. So I think this is going to continue to fall. And I think there's a natural tendency right there. You see where this wall is. All the prices came up and stopped. Did not want to go above that line. So that is definitely a strong support. This is going to come down and hit that. Now, is there any other ones like that? Well, we got one right here. It came down and hit something. It's like an invisible wall there. And it seems to line up with this one right there. So we're going to draw one right there. So we anticipate this, I do, to come down to at least this spot. It's already hit it once, it's rolled up. If it tests it twice, it could come down. If it breaks below it and seems to want to go down, it's probably going to come all the way down to here. There's very little support to stop it here. So this would be a great buy-in price. $2, 201 203 If it dibbles be, be beneath this $2 mark, Folks, it could easily come underneath the dollar. It could come all the way down to there. So this is your first break point. If it breaks this, be patient. Do not be in a hurry to get into this. I think it's a good opportunity, but let it play its cards out. It's going to tumble because of impatience. The patent should play out. The marketing should play out. News presses should be released. We've got this company, that company, pre-orders. We have a letter of intent. Something. If there is no news, well, sooner or later you've got to hear something or you're going to want to sell too. So don't buy in. Let it fall, let it fall. And before the news hits, try to get in cheap, folks. So follow this one. I think that this is very interesting. I like the man. I like the concept. I like the company. I like that they want to sell not just the product. Uh, but they want to build a product from it and supply that product to all these companies. They want to share it with the world. Why not? You get paid for it, right? So, put it on your list. I'm putting it on mine. Now, the best way I think to play this stock is to watch it fall and buy in slow. Now, I expect there could be news. You could get just letters of understanding. Something that just says from a company, if you guys are successful and can get your product out on the market by 2022 in June, we'll take 10 million of them. They could do that before they actually sell it. That's part of marketing. So there's lots of chances to get news presses. They have a lot of clientele out there in a very hot market with a very ingenuitive concept idea. You know, to me, I think it's easy. You should just be able to throw a wheel on the back of the car and drag that wheel and get free power. But if scientists have been trying to get power from the same engine that's using the power, well, there's your problem. <laughs> it's just that easy to me. So patience should get you good price. We are at that top line. If you think it's going to still move, you could buy 20% right now. Don't buy everything because you're not sure where the price is going to go. So why commit to it? If the price falls, you're going to get a much better price. Now you can average down that high price you bought by another 20%. You'll be cutting it in half. Now you still don't invest everything, right? Because we don't know where the stock is going and you can't fully commit until the price commits. So if it falls again, you're going to be well under a dollar. Now you can buy 35% and you are going to be at a tremendously low price and you're going to be patient and you're going to wait for the signs of this to start showing growth. And when it starts to grow, it's going to be down here and your average is up here. It's going to come up and you've brought your average down so low that when the price starts to rise, you throw your last buy in about 35% at the point of your average which is very low now and you have your whole pro your, your whole purchase in as it's climbing you've actually spurred on the growth with your purchase helping your own environment so buying in smart will get you the best price 
being patient and waiting for it to take off will get you the best gains. I expect this company to go far, but you're going to have to hold while everybody else is selling. Just put it on the back burner. Remember, it's a long hold. You've got at least a year, two years before it goes crazy. Could be earlier, but don't put your hopes up there. Put it on the back burner. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.